what is the difference between suspending and deleting a user? And if I delete a user, can I also restore it? We'll answer that question and more in this video. Welcome to our second episode to our YouTube series, Mastering the Google Admin Console. My name is Leon. I'm a Google certified trainer and administrator at a company called Cloudwise, the creators of the Cool School platform. We help schools integrate IT within education, and we would like to share our knowledge and experience with you in this series on how we help schools set up their Google Admin Console. In this particular video, we will cover suspending, deleting, and restoring users. So let's dive right in. To do this type of user management, we have to pull up the user in front of us. So either we go to users and search in that way, or we use the search bar. In this case, I'll do it through users and I will go to the organizational unit where I know the user currently is located at. All right, so now I have the users in front of me. And the things we're going to try out are going to be done with Jonah here. Now, Jonah is someone who hasn't signed in. If I open their profile, we can see that their last sign in hasn't actually happened, but the account is set to active. Now we see here that we have a few options and one of them is to suspend the user or we can delete the user. What's the difference between that? When we suspend a user, that essentially means that the account will remain within your Google Workspace environment, but your user can no longer access the account. Any email sent to the account will bounce back, giving a message that they cannot deliver the email. Any files, however, that they have ownership of that have been shared within your organization will still be accessible, though. So essentially, when we suspend a user, they will make sure that the user can no longer log in, but the account details and everything that has been stored on the account will be saved. When we delete a user, then that means that everything that is connected to the account will be removed unless we delegate it to someone else. A thing that is very important to know also about the difference between suspending and deleting a user is that when we suspend a user, any licenses that have been assigned to the account will actually remain assigned. It's pretty important to know, especially when you want to be very mindful of how you use those licenses, especially when there are recurring costs to them. Now, if we suspend the user, we click on suspend user, then we see user license fees still apply to suspended users, as I just mentioned, and I click suspend. Now, what we will see is that this account has now been suspended by admin. From this point on, any email sent, any calendar invites will bounce back. If I want to make sure that Jonah can log in again, for example, Jonah has for a moment, a few months left our organization, but returns later on, then there's no problem to just reactivate the account. And from that point on, Jonah can continue using their old account, which is really useful and really easy. But then Jonah leaves our organization for good, or at least that's what we think. Then we go to delete user. Now, by deleting a user, there are a few things to bear in mind, as you can see. At its core, Google Workspace for Education is, of course, free. However, maybe your organization has chosen to actually get more licenses to add functionality and assign those licenses to certain individuals. Now, if you have an annual plan, so a annual recurring bill, essentially, then those licenses will go back into the pool to be reused if we delete this user but this will not reduce the annual fee. This is perhaps important to know. Now what we see here is that we can decide to transfer data. And this is really, really important. We can select a new owner for several types of data. And you may ask yourself, why is that important? Now, what happens? Let's say that Jonah has worked really hard within our organization, has created a lot of folders and a lot of files that Jonah has ownership over. If Jonah, however, leaves the organization, then when we suspend the account, there really is not a problem because everyone can still access those files that have been shared. However, if we delete the account 
and we don't transfer the ownership to a different account, then suddenly those files and folders will disappear. Really annoying, especially when people use them on a daily basis. So it is very important to make sure that you have some form of system in place to make sure that you transfer the files of very important individuals. You can ask them individually, personally, of course, to transfer those files. But when someone has already left the organization, it may be a lot better for you to just transfer it to another account. You can do that in two ways. One of them is, of course, to see if there's someone with a similar role as the previous user had and then transfer it to them with their approval, of course. Or you can create what we call a service documents account. In this case, you would make sure that you create a separate account, which you only use essentially as a file backup, as it were. Then we can simply say documents at cloudschool.eu and we can decide what we want to transfer to that account. In this case, we can decide to share drive and document files. And we have the option whether or not we want to also include private documents. So things that have not been shared with other people. This may be very useful, especially when it is an account which was of the director of uh, your school or maybe someone else that has an important role that has a replacement. We, of course, also see that we can transfer calendar invites. We can transfer brand accounts. We have that, for example, for YouTube channels. We can have Data Studio if you have used that. Perhaps you haven't. And of course, we can also decide to just not transfer any data at all and just clean delete this account. Now, let's say that I don't transfer the data and I now delete the user. OK, great. We deleted the account of Jonah. Um, except for the fact that we shouldn't have deleted the account because Jonah was only temporarily leaving our organization. Don't worry, we can just restore the account and I'm going to show you how to do that. If we are in this overview, we see that we can add a filter. This is essentially to simply get a better list of users that we want to find. And you can see we do that on several fields. But the thing that we're going to filter on is recently deleted. Now, what you see here is that Jonah's account has indeed recently been deleted. And we can also see that there are 20 days left to recover. That is the grace period that you have after deleting a user to make sure that you can still restore it without any consequences. To actually restore it, we go to recover. We get some confirmation details. We click continue. We decide in which organizational unit we wish to place this user and then the account will be recovered. Now, this may take a little while, so I'm going to skip ahead until the account is available again. The account has been restored. We can see that because in their profile, it has been set to active. If it is still set to suspended, please make sure that you reactivate the account the same way as you normally would reactivate a suspended account. And then your user can reuse their old previous account. All right. Now you know how to suspend users, how to delete users, what the difference is between that, and how you can restore them again within the Google Admin Console. If you would like to learn more about the Google Admin Console, do check out any of the other videos on our YouTube channel. If you found this video helpful, let us know by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. If you don't want to miss any of our uploads, also make sure that you turn on the notifications. Are there any topics that you would like us to cover? Let us know in the comments down below. We plan to upload a new video every week, so stay tuned for more short how-to videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.